Glory, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil's on a run. And the body's on pursuit. Yes. We are no longer in defense mode. We're in attack mode. So if you're not an attacker, that means you're not in the battle. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. I believe. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Looks good. Is everybody there? Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. The love of the Father God to us. Amen? Called us and accepted us. <clears throat> The love of the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. Hello. The world doesn't know you no more. All of your associations not only don't really know who you are, but don't understand what you are. Because it did not, or they did not know him. So you got to remember something. Anyone that doesn't really know him doesn't know you anymore. Amen. They don't understand you anymore. They may think you're a little weird, peculiar. They even may call you religious because they don't really know what it is. Amen? So they don't know. So listen, you don't have to convince anyone who you are. You don't have to approve anyone who you are. You are pre-approved. Amen? Amen? Glory. Verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. We will be like he is. Well, we will be like he is. You know, we have a hard time comprehending this because of our peanut brain. Because of all the things that we're impressed in here and everything we've got to go through and all the suffering and all the lies and all the stuff that goes on in this world and everything that we see and all the corruption and everything else, you know, we, we so easily get caught up in all of this stuff. We get caught up in trying to get our life back when we sold it. <laughs> You sold your life to God. He bought you. So you don't have a life no more. Everyone say, I don't have a life anymore. This is the biggest problem in the body of Christ. They lose sight of that, that they were bought. Because if you weren't bought, you'd be in hell. Or you'd be headed there. So if you can stay in a condition of being bought that you're not your own anymore, then you wouldn't fight for your life anymore. You would surrender it all the time going, hey, see, because if he bought you, you have a lifetime warranty. It's when you take it back that you lose that warranty. Does everybody get this? This is reality for me and you. It's dimensional reality. And these are things that you and I should be seeking all the time grabbing hold of and eating, feeding all the time, who we really are. Because the first thing the devil always wants to steal is your identity. Most people don't even know who they are yet. They're still trying to be somebody that a, the world portrays as a hero. But what man exalts, God abhors. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Verse 3, it says, And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. 
Whoever commits sin also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is what? Lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin at all. Whoever abides in him does not sin. There you are. Whoever abides in who's ever connected to him doesn't sin. Doesn't mean we won't make a mistake. Amen? But we don't allow sin to reign in our life. We don't allow the presence of evil. We drive it out. We sense it. Whoever abides in him doesn't sin, and whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. For what purpose? That he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. So this is why God came. So why did you come? Why were you manifested now? To destroy the works of the devil. Not to build a life. To destroy the works of the devil. While you're doing that, God builds you. Amen? While you're destroying the works of the devil, God begins to establish everything in your life. It's when you start trying to establish everything in your life and begin to drift from destroying Satan's kingdom that you begin to live for yourself and not him. And the enemy sees that. He challenges you on that. He waits for that moment. Those are moments he gets access. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. Now remember, sin is the presence of evil, so he no longer associates with the presence of evil. He exposes, he knows it, he senses it. Because he has been born of God. Now think about this. You have been born of God. You've been born of God. Everyone say, I'm born of God. Born of God. That means you're his offspring. That means you're to be like him. Hmm. We can't even get that. It's hard. I'm to be like God. He didn't say you would be God. He said you'd be like him. In other words, you would think the way he thinks. You would see the way he sees. You'd love the way he loves. You'd have compassion the way he has compassion. You would forgive the way he forgives. You would speak the way he speaks. Amen? You would move according to the way he moves. You would approve of what he approves. You would disapprove of what he disapproves. You would be like him. It says here in verse 10, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So what if a person practices goodness? Well, you're a good person. There's a difference between good and righteousness. Good people go to hell. Righteousness go home. Why? Because they're still eating at a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, many times we're going to see the word good in here, which actually is a representation of righteousness. So you'll have to discern that by the Spirit of God. Amen? The love of the Father is so powerful. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Hallelujah. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Wow. So the world of associations do not know who you are, nor do they understand what you are. You and I are to awaken his image. We're to seek this hope. If we seek this hope, it purifies us. Why? Because there's something about seeking that changes everything. We are to be seekers of truth. Seekers of truth. In everything of our life, we are to be seekers of truth. If when the moment you begin to stop seeking is when the enemy begins to come in. It's like a person that stops rowing the boat. They're rowing and rowing. Next thing they know, 
what begins to happen is the current begins to take them. As soon as we stop seeking, so every day should be a seek. When the word says, I sought the Lord every morning. Amen? Why? Well, what are we doing? We're making connection. We're seeking him. We're seeking revelation. We're seeking illumination. We're seeking guidance. We're seeking. What does the word say? Seek his face. Amen? We are to be seekers of the truth. Of the truth. Now we know that Jesus is the truth, the person of truth. Amen? Go to John chapter 8. <laughs> John chapter 8. John 8, 31. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, think about this for a second, because there are those who are seekers and there are those who are rejectors of truth. Amen? So to seek is to maintain a level of pursuit. If you're truly a seeker, you're maintaining a level of pursuit. When you are maintaining this level of pursuit, it is involving the practice of righteousness. It's the act of cooperation with his character that produces the fruit of righteousness. I'll say that again. To seek is to maintain a level of pursuit involving the practice of righteousness. To seek is to maintain a level of pursuit involving the practice of righteousness. It is the act of cooperation with his character. Why? Because the act of cooperation with his character produces the fruit of righteousness. Amen? We were manifested, drawn towards God, called by God, by the Holy Spirit, amen, to become seekers of his truth, to become seekers of his presence, and to become seekers of his power. It's called the anointing. <laughs> we're to be seekers of the anointing. Amen? And what, is, what are we supposed to do? Remember, we're called to what? Battle. Our purpose is what? Destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who have been taken captive. So remember, to seek is maintaining a level of pursuit. If you're maintaining a level of pursuit, and one of the things that we must maintain is a level of pursuit of our enemy. Because if you're truly a seeker of truth, you're also a seeker of destruction to the powers of darkness. In John 8, 31. Well, can you... Abide without seeking? No. So when you see abide, you know that there was already a seek. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. free. How many people know the truth and aren't free, though? Amen? Why? Because they stopped seeking. Amen? There's, they're not maintaining a level of pursuit. They become compromised, complacent. They become drifted. They become misled. They're still re relying on their prayers from a week ago. Well, I prayed yesterday. I don't need to pray today. You blew it already. Just even agree with that thought. You just stopped. Then he just put you in your tracks. He actually tied you up and put him on, put you on his track. And he's got a train coming. Hallelujah. Of course, they answered him and said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. 
How can you say you will be made free? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. How many times has Jesus said, anyone who comes after me, anyone who wants to follow me, in other words, anyone who wants to seek me, you must deny yourself. So you can't seek without denying yourself. And then he says, well, pick up the cross and fight, and then you'll be able to follow me. Because follow is associated with seeking. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 3. To abide by seeking puts truth into practice, which brings freedom. 1 Pete 3. Seekers of truth. I guess you might put parentheses, seekers of the anointing. I'm a hog for the anointing. <laughs> get out of my way when the anointing comes I want it all <laughs> glory 1 Pete 3 verses 10 and 12 through 12 what's it say for he who would love life and seek good days let him what refrain his tongue from speaking stupid stuff. Amen. Which is called evil. From his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from what? Evil. Come on, read it with me. And do good, which means righteousness there. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Let him seek see, So you see, seek and pursue, don't you? Hmm. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, these are those that reject truth. So there are seekers and rejectors. You, don't, you know, so many times we don't even realize that we're rejecting truth. When the Holy Spirit's trying to lead us, we're actually, and we don't go, we're rejecting truth. How many times have the Spirit gives us counsel and we reject it? We're actually rejecting truth, so we're denying Christ. See, we, we, we've come to a place because in this country, there's so much open freedom. You know, when I was, I was in Haiti, and I was walking down, and there was a group of people worshiping the Lord, and man, I, could, I was drawn by the presence of God. I fell on my knees and began to weep, and they were over there worshiping. Uh, the presence of God came on me from way over there. And my daughter was walking with me, and all of a sudden, I went to my knees, and I just began to worship, and I began to cry. And I said, Lord, Why? Why is this so wonderful here? Why? And he said to me, I'm all they have. I'm all they have. And I thought, man, we got to get to the attitude where he's all we have. Because when we are seekers and pursuers, that without him we are nothing. He opens. He opens heaven. He opens ways where there seems to be no way. When he is all that we have, life changes. But the moment we stop that, the moment we begin to real, rely on ourselves, the moment we stop seeking, the moment we begin to trust in our own confidence, that puts a delay of advancement 
and it opens the door. And the enemy begins to knock. See, he knows. He knows when that pursuit is ceased or delayed. That's when he comes knocking at the door. And the problem is, is people go, who's there? And he lies to you. And he'll come up with a familiar voice. Hi, I'm the Holy Spirit. Let me in. <laughs> Wrong. Hallelujah. <laughs> Seek and pursue truth. Evil reject truth and cannot practice it. There are those who are seekers and there are those who are rejecters. And many times we fall into a rejected mode. But thank God for his blood that we can repent and get out and go forward. As long as you know it. Amen. Acts 17. Acts 17. You know, the enemy, the enemy watches us 24-7. He's waiting for an opportune time. The word tells us that they prepare snares for me and you all the time. Amen? So in that, you and I have to be alert and consistent. And realize that in anything, soon as that seeking, that pursuing, begins to compromise and complace, and he's there. He comes. He waits for that opportune moment to just come in, to just knock. Verse 24, Acts 17, verse 24. Let's speak it. God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in the temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should what? Seek. Does everybody see that? So that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grow for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art in man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this, to all by raising him from the dead. The moment we begin to cease, compromise, or even step back from seeking, the enemy comes with something as a false fulfillment. Because what happens is you're being fulfilled as you're constantly seeking. You're being fulfilled. Yes, yes. And the moment you're no longer fulfilled, the enemy sees that, and he comes in with a counterfeit. He comes in a counterfeit emotion. He comes in with a counterfeit, a fake fulfillment. He puts a desire there and sets you on another track. Well, maybe I'll do this. In all kinds of areas, he can set you on a false fulfillment of another job. He can set you on a false fulfillment with a person. He can set you on a false fulfillment of a project. He can set you on a false fulfillment anywhere. Does everybody understand that? In anything. You know, the worst thing that we can do is be successful in the wrong assignment. And most, there's many who are because they've stopped seeking. They stopped pursuing Seek and grow for the truth in him, the person of truth, 
We are his offsprings of the divine nature. We're partakers by becoming seekers. You cannot walk in the divine nature or partake in the divine nature without being a seeker. Amen? 2 Thessalonians 2. Oh, happy days. Thessalonians 2. In verse 9. What's it say? It says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, sounds, signs, and lying wonders. Amen? With all power, signs, and lying wonders. You know how many people are going to be misled? Because they've stepped back from seeking and pursuing. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. In other words, they were rejectors. That they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion. Well, we see this happening everywhere. Again, look at the political parties. We see this happening in our governments, in other governments, globally, in organizations. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they may believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but they've rejected the truth. See, not to believe the truth means you rejected the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. They reject the truth. They're not seekers. Many are fallen from seeking today. That's what the falling away is about. To seek is to go beyond your human nature. Amen? To seek is to go beyond your human nature, to go beyond your human emotion. your emotional, your nature, to go beyond the natural line of your thoughts into the realm of eternal truth. In other words, by becoming a seeker and a pursuer of truth, you will step into a new reality. And one of the things we want to maintain is that reality of the other side. When we lose that sight, that that sight is more real than this sight, we become dangerous, not only to ourselves, but to others. Matthew 6. Oh, yes. Matthew 6, 30-something, 33. We've heard this plenty of times. That's why he says, but seek what? First the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Wow. So we're to seek the eternal truth and find righteousness. Amen. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself and its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we are to be seekers. In Psalm 34. So by seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it says all things will be added. You will never lack anything, will you? So lack comes by not seeking and pursuing. Psalm 34. In verse 4, 
Psalm 34, verse 4, what does it say? I sought the Lord, and he what? And he heard me. And delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. So you think that the word sought and the word cried out is associated with seek. Amen. The, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and does what? Delivers him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no lack or no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek, those who seek, those who seek, the Lord shall not lack any good thing. In other words, God has it all set for you. He's got these warehouses filled for what you will need in this side. Whatever it is. It's filled. It's amazing how many people have never accessed the warehouses of God. Because every time they get close enough, the enemy slides in and sways them. And they begin to rely on their own strength. They stop seeking. They look for another fulfillment. That's why the word says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Amen? Proverbs 3. Ask, seek, and knock. So when you ask, are you actually seeking also? Yeah. Amen. Proverbs 3. Proverbs chapter 3. In verse 5. Is everybody there? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways do what? Acknowledge him. Is that seeking? Yes. And he shall what? Direct your path. Don't be a wise guy. Don't be wise in your own understanding. Eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Acknowledge as one who seeks the truth. There's no lack in that person. Amen? No lack. You're not a lacker anymore. So you can't be a slacker. You got to be a pursuer and a seer, seeker. James 1. You know, it all goes back to the same thing that we've always talked about, consistency. Amen? The key to victory is consistency. Why well, I just don't feel like doing it today. Who told you that, right? Well, I just, that's how I feel. <laughs> oh, woman up and man up. Pull out that sword and kick some butt. Before you get your butt kicked. <laughs> Hallelujah. James chapter 1 and verse 21. People that are led by their feelings that are most dangerous people. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer. 
but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Now, I want to ask you something and think about this. A person who does not hear good is not a good seeker. One who seeks will hear. If a person is not a good seeker, he's not a good hearer. Amen? There is an attempt, but there's not a breakthrough. And that can only come by constantly being consistent, consistent, and consistent. Amen? If you're a true seeker and a pursuer, you will become a good hearer. 1 Timothy 4. Seekers of truth. Now the truth is the person, isn't it? So we are seekers of the truth, his presence, and his power. Again, we are seekers of truth, his presence, and his power, which is the anointing. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in a later time, some will depart from the faith. Well, how are they going to depart? Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, which are going to cause them to compromise and become complacent. And they will delay or slow down in their seeking. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Now, gra grab hold of this. People are going to become in a state of more outwardly instead of inwardly. In other words, instead of seeking inwardly, they will more seek outwardly in how they dress. I want to dress holy. It's a new style these days. Everybody walks around with holy jeans, right? That doesn't make them holy. Praise God. They begin to depart from seeking truth. They begin to be more concerned on the outside, what they eat, what they wear. Where they go. All of these things that are outwardly import, important to them has been a, an exchange or a transfer instead of what's inwardly important by seeking. Amen? 2 Timothy 4. In verse 1, let's speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their what? Own desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Now, these own desires came from the enemy. Why? Because they slacked up on pursuit and seeking. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your calling or your ministry. Itching ears, turning away from seeking the truth. The devil is dumbing up people. He's dumbing them up with medications, with legalization of drugs, with prescriptions. You know, pot doesn't make you smart. That's why they call it dope. Yo, dope. Antidepressants and all this other stuff that they got. Painkillers and everything else. It's amazing. The medical field has infiltrated the world system. You know, they have measles or chicken pox wasn't deadly. Now they've created a deadly act. Why? So they can inject people with what else they're putting in it. I wouldn't trust them for nothing. 
And if they don't want our kids to go to the school, then take them out. People are giving in to all of this stuff. They're not fighting. They're wimps. Thank God I'm not president. We'd be in war all over the place. <laughs> We'd be going to every place calling destructive fire. And I'd have every submarine and every battleship at every place. Except Jesus and or die. <laughs> this is a good day to die. <laughs> Lift your hands to heaven. It's a Holy Ghost stick up. Like I said, thank God I'm not present. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's probably going around my feet. <laughs> God, why did I make him pastor? <laughs> <laughs> Titus 1. <laughs>
trying to remove a, 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 sisti, a sitting president. We've never seen this happen like this, ever, ever. And we're about to see a lot of more explosion go on. You're going about to see more arrests and all kinds of stuff. And we've never seen the media lie so much. We've never seen so much lies and so much deception and so much evil because it's all come to the surface. They're not seekers of truth. They're seekers of evil. But God has placed this man in president who was a heathen. Hello? And we were all right next to him at one time. Heathenitis. Carried that disease. But Jesus healed us. Now we got righteousness. Amen? His righteousness. But God can use anyone willing to yield. And we're about to see a big explosion get ready to happen. And not just in this country, but globally. God is not bringing judgment on this country. He's bringing righteousness and justice. This country has assisted the gospel of Jesus Christ more than any other country in the world. Even though it came from Israel. Amen? But God took what Israel rejected and gave to the United States to reach the world. He hasn't forgotten all what this country has done. In fact, this country is going to be the main source of the last day harvest globally. Other countries are beginning to collapse. Europe is collapsing. People don't realize it. And God is going to use this leader to collapse other countries through trade, economic, currency is coming. And that begins to happen too. All kinds of things are going to begin to happen. We're seeing it globally. We are, we are alive. It is the last hour. We're about to step into eternity soon. And we can't lose sight of that. Amen? Did you go to Titus yet? Oh, hallelujah. Titus is on page 3,000. Is that what you said? <laughs> Titus 1. Did we do it? Yeah. All right, go to 1 John 2. Are you there yet? Yeah. Y'all got Titus? Yes. Don't get Titus on me. Oh, we read this, didn't we? Verse 18. We read this too? We got yes, no, whatever. Let's read it again. <laughs> Verse 18. Amen. Little children. Oh, I remember now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got tightest. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Little children. It's the last hour. How many of y'all believe we're in the last hour? As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. We didn't get that far yet. Okay. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Amen? Amen. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. Now why did they get moved out? They weren't seekers. They were sneakers. <laughs> But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? You have a what? An anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I've not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies Jesus is the anointed one and is anointing, the Christ. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges or seeks the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If you heard, 
If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, but just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Seekers of the anointing are seekers of the truth, his presence, and power. And we're going to close at 1 John chapter 5. Verse 18. Is everybody there? I know we didn't read this yet. At least tonight, anyways. Verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one doesn't touch him. So the only way the wicked one can't touch you is if you do what? Keep yourself. And how are you going to keep yourself? Being a what? Seeker of the truth, presence, and power. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Why? Because they will sway you. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Keep us as seekers of your truth, your presence, and your power. And we repent in any way, Lord, that we have compromised continuance of seeking. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound and bless each and every one here, Lord, with revelation and impartation of your word that was released tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.